Good evening. Really hope you enjoyed the story from Mrs. Sice last time, and it's my turn to read the bedtime story now. And my story is called Pearl Power, and it's by somebody called Mel Elliot. And there's quite a few Pearl Power books, but this is the first one. Pearl was anxious, Pearl was sad. They were moving house, and this could be bad. Pearl tried to keep smiling. They were moving because her mum had been clever and they'd made her the boss. She would miss her bedroom and the kids on her street, but she thought about all the cool kids she might meet, like kids who were shy and kids who were smart, some great at science and some good at art. As her mum loaded boxes onto the lorry, she ruffled Pearl's hair and said, not to worry, the time has come to leave this town. Life's a journey, don't you frown? Pearl and her mum drove off the next day with a stop for a burger along the way. They talked of the great new life they would make and also which junctions and exits to take. The new house was bigger than the one before, with a big shiny lion upon the front door and a big luscious garden with a swing and a tree. Pearl, Pearl smiled proudly. Yep, this is for me. Monday came, there were butterflies in tummies. Not just in pearls, but also in mummies. Good luck, they said, as they left at the gate. Mum had to dash. The boss couldn't be late. The new school was huge and Pearl was afraid, but she had to be tough. It was time to be brave. Most of the kids were bigger than Pearl, but she knew that she was a clever, strong girl. When it was playtime, they played with a ball. And a boy named Sebastian, who was ever so tall, laughed, ha 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 ha, you throw like a girl. And she knew what to do. Why, thank you, said Pearl. If you thought that was good, then get ready for this. And she held the ball oh so tight in her fist. He can't squish me like some dainty flower, for I am Pearl and I have Pearl power. Her arms swung back right over her head. She let go of the ball and away it sped. It went higher and higher over treetops and homes. Some big rocks so big kids took pictures using their phones. Sebastian yelled, will my ball be back soon? Nah, said Pearl, it's gone to the moon. After break, it was time to do sums and the classroom was full of kids sat on their bums. One by one, they did their times table, but when it came to Pearl's turn, she was simply unable. She didn't want to get her sums wrong, but when she checked in her brain, all the numbers had gone. Sebastian laughed. You do maths like a girl. And she knew what to do. Why, thank you, said Pearl. If you thought that was good, now you listen to me. I can count really fast. Listen, one, two, three. She carried on counting right past a million, and Pearl didn't stop till she reached 90 billion. Don't laugh at me for getting things wrong, for I'm a girl who's clever and strong. Sebastian frowned. That's stupid, he snapped. All the other kids cheered and clapped. Now Pearl could always run really fast, and when she raced, she never came last. But during PE, they were running around when Pearl tripped up and fell to the ground. Sebastian laughed. Ha, you run like a girl. She knew what to do. Why, thank you, said Pearl. If you thought that was fast, well now watch me go. And she ran round the track, not the slightest bit slow. She jumped over puddles, and though her knee was sore, she ran so fast that it hurt no more. The school bell rang. It was time to go home. But was Sebast Sebastian was crying and all alone. It was raining fast. It was getting all wet. Your mum is running late, I bet. My mum isn't here, and my book's in a puddle. Pearl knew what to do. She gave him a cuddle. You hug like a girl, Sebastian said. And Pearl just smiled and nodded her head. The end. Hope you enjoyed the story. Have a good sleep. Thank you.